Welcome to another installment in Pre-Algebra Lessons. I'm Mr. Polarski. I'm going to be your host today for negative and zero exponents. Let's get started. Here we have a little table of values. 2 to the third is equal to 8. 2 to the second is equal to 4. 2 to the first is equal to 2. But what does 2 to the zero and 2 to the negative 1 and 2 to the negative 2 equal? Well, we can see we do have a pattern here that the exponents are increasing by, or I should say decreasing by one, not increasing, but they are decreasing by one. And as they decrease by one, the answer also is decreasing, and it's decreasing by a factor of two, or we can see that we can divide the previous number by 2 or multiply it by 1 half in fact to get the next number in the order so 1 half times 2 would give us 1 1 half times 1 would give us 1 half and 1 half times 1 half would give us 1 fourth now if you didn't see that pattern initially, that's okay, but it's rooted in the definition of negative exponents. First we'll talk about uh, zero exponents. We saw in the previous pattern that 2 to the zero would give us 1. Any non-zero number being raised to the zero power is equal to 1. And then for negative exponents, for any non-zero number, a to the negative n is equal to 1 to the 1 over a to the n. And we're going to see how to use these zero and negative exponent properties or rules to simplify some expressions. We want to write the expressions with positive exponents only. Here we have 4 to the negative sixth. Well, by definition, a negative exponent as a positive, to write it as a positive, we have a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So in this particular case, it's going to be written as 1 over 4 to the 6th power. In example 2, we have both of the rules we just saw in this problem. We have a 0 exponent and a negative exponent. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so this could become 3 times 1 times t to the negative 5. And the way that would work out from there, well, 3 times 1 is 3. And to write t with a positive exponent, we have to make this into a fraction and put t to the positive fifth in a denominator. So 3s to the 0t to the negative fifth with all positive exponents would be 3 over t to the fifth. In problem 3 here, we have 14a to the negative 2 times b to the third. Only one of them has a negative exponent. So we will leave 14b to the third in the numerator of the fraction we're going to create, and we will move a squared to the denominator. Notice that it's no longer a negative 2, it is now a positive 2. We want to write these expressions without fraction bars, so in this particular case we have 1 over 36. Well, to do that, let's see if we can break 36 down into a number, or write 36 as another number with an exponent. Uh, hopefully you do know that 36 can be written as 6 squared, and 6 squared being a positive exponent in the denominator, you will need to move it into the numerator. And now we have 6 to the negative 2 power which is the same as 1 over 36. We move it from the denominator, and we write it without a denominator in this case, or a fraction bar, as 6 to the negative 2 power. Here we have in problem number 2, x to the third over y to the seventh. Uh, without a fraction bar means we need to write this in the numerator, y to the seventh in the numerator, x to the third, and then next to that times y to the negative 7 moving it from the denominator into the numerator makes the exponent become negative. We 
want to find the product or quotient, write the answer using only positive exponents. So we're going to apply, in this case, the product of powers rule, where we have expressions or powers with the same base, in this case, 5. So that will become 5 to the 12 plus negative 10 power. And 12 plus negative 10 is a positive 2, so that's going to become 5 to the second power. We could evaluate that to 25, but it says using only positive exponents, so we're going to leave our answer with an exponent in it. In this case, we're going to apply the quotient of powers rule, where it says if we're dividing powers with like bases, we subtract their exponents. So this problem here can be rewritten as 15 times a to the 5 minus 2 power, and that would give us 15 a to the 3rd power. In this last problem, a meter is equal to 100 millimeters, so we could write that as a ratio or a fraction, 1 meter over 1,000 millimeters. And a kilometer is 1,000 meters, so 1 kilometer or 1 kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. We want to express a millimeter in terms of kilometers, so we want to take 1 millimeter and we want to convert it into kilometers. Well, to do that, we need to use these ratios here that we're given. We're changing 1 millimeter into kilometers. This is a science conversion, really. And this ratio here, one millimeter over, or one meter over 1,000 millimeters, is what we'll do first. One meter over 1,000 millimeters. And then we'll multiply that by this ratio, one kilometer over 1,000 millimeters, or 1,000 meters. It's important to bring your units in this problem because we're converting units. That's the whole idea here, is that we're going to be converting units. And we'll show this here, that one millimeter times one meter over 1,000 millimeters, the units, millimeters, cancel out. And then we, we multiply this, one meter times one kilometer over 1,000 meters, the meters are going to cancel out and leave us with kilometers. So when we complete this multiplication, it will provide us how many millimeters are in one kilometer or millimeters in, expressed in kilometers. So one times one times one kilometer is one kilometer. And 1,000 times 1,000 is a one with six zeros after or one million. So expressing this, we could write that as one kilometer over one times ten to the sixth, and with a positive exponent, that would be one times ten to the negative sixth kilometers. So this is an expression, or this is how we would express one millimeter in terms of kilometers, one times ten to the negative sixth.